Production funding for Making It Up North is provided by the citizens of Minnesota through the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I would have never thought in northern Minnesota that hot sauce would have been that big. Loose Fish House, this is Ashley, how can I help you out? Starting off opening a business, you don't really know what needs to be done until you're in the middle of a fire and you're trying to open. Up northbound road, yeah, take me home. Started out as a joke, now it's my career. You can't handle the heat. Stay out of this kitchen. <laughs> These are ghost peppers. But here we're gonna make our uh, Haitian heat hot sauce. Yeah, we started with a lot of ingredients that are that are on foods that people already like. Amplified them a little bit and add a little bit of a kick to it. The majority of my training is from experience. And I've learned, you know, how not to cut your fingers open, <laughs> you know. So me being a startup business, it's that first, that initial startup cost is, whew, that's the big one. You gotta keep that low and start selling first. Yeah, we'll get a few more of these ones done and then you'll, yeah, you'll see that thing in action. It's, you'll see why we invested in it. It's awesome. So it has a little half inch blade right there and it just keeps cutting up. Just goes and spits them right out, perfect half inch cuts every single time. And this is uh, it's a bit of an investment, but again, the time that you save in the kitchen, that's the goal. Save your time. Ugh. Ooh. There we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> so you can see why we start with the super hots and put those down at the bottom so you don't have to smell them for the next hour. <laughs> oh. This kitchen has made a monumental difference in my production. It's I've worked through a few different kitchens before I moved back to my hometown here. And this kitchen is something else. It's kind of a well-kept secret. Hopefully not for very much longer. You know, the, the riches, you know, Tom and Jess, they've, they've, they've welcomed me with open arms. It literally feels like I've come home. And it's been much, much easier for me to, to operate and do, do what I need to do, checking that pH, checking that temperature. Nobody would have thought a hot sauce would have came out of Floodwood, but yep, sure enough, right off of Main Street. Well, I went to high school in Floodwood. I was adopted at 18 months uh, out of Port-au-Prince, Haiti. I adopted through the Duluth area. Because of different things going on in life, I was then put in foster care uh, about 10 years old. I was very fortunate to have ended up in a foster home up here. My foster father, um, Tim Miles, he's a former All-American in college. Played in the NFL, played played the Cleveland Browns, and uh, you know he has two sons of two sons of his own, and I happen to be lucky and be a part of their family now, and they've they've always been a huge support system for me. The whole town has been right from the first moment I walked in. Hey, how are you doing? What's your name? I'm Al. Where are you from? Duluth. Oh, cool. Welcome to Floodwood, and that's the way it's been always. <laughs> it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, he's a local boy and he's starting a business in Floodwood. Uh, how can you not like that? So yeah, we're very excited for him. Very excited that he accepted our offer to come and uh, come cook here. Yeah, played football, played basketball, and uh, did track and field. I went to the boxing gym, and it was a totally different experience. They spar and they fight and they punch each other in the face, they punch each other in the body and they laugh and they joke. And I'm like, ha, huh. well that's different. So I got into it myself and I landed my first big punch on like the guy in the gym. I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. This guy, he'd been boxing 15 years and I landed a crispy clean punch on him. Granted I had my eyes closed and I swung it like, <laughs> but it landed. I need to do that with my eyes open. Oh, now I can be balanced. And there's all these little intricacies that go into the sport that really got my interest. And that's where it started. 
I saw that little bit of success, that little bit of a spark, like, it can be real. So I just gave it all I had, won the Golden Gloves, came back from, uh, from Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I lost to number three in the country, came back, turned pro. Um, yeah, won, nas won the national title of my, or won the state title of my sixth or seventh uh, pro fight. Won a national title, uh, seventh or eighth. Once I got to somewhere around eight or nine fights, I started coaching. And I wanted to bring others up behind me because, because of my life experience, I know what it's like to not have that support. When I'm training for fights and I'm cutting weight, I can't eat that much. But if I'm gonna eat, I want it to taste good. This is something that I've happened to do in my spare time. I'm also a corrections officer as well. I'm a professional boxer, I'm a youth mentor. Um, I'm a fitness coach. I continue to let life keep moving forward. It's been really cool to see how everything's grown and how people have, people have accepted it and, and really jumped on it right from the gate. I didn't have the labels made and I was still selling out. So we, yeah, we recently had Montelac, they bought three boxes. They're gonna have it on every table up there. Oh, we use it in a few, few things. We use it, of course, at our Bloody Mary bar because everybody is looking for the, the next neat uh, additive to the Bloody Mary, uh, but it's a main ingredient in our buttermilk chicken sandwich, uh, both used in the glaze and then in the, uh, the uh, breading, the coating that we put on it, and that's what gives it that unique kind of hot and then sweet flavor. I look forward to being in more restaurants, being in, uh, being in grocery stores and things like that, and I would love to take the place of Frank's on every restaurant table in the upper uh, Minnesota area, if not the country. When we decided to do this originally, him and I had a, a, probably a two hour conversation at, at a table at my house about ideas back and forth about how to market it. How can you, you know, put it into like a different container? Can I get it in bulk for, the, for the, a kitchen operation so that we can use it just uh, for a cost benefit? There's a, a lot of things in business not many people are willing to share, but it's just having the conversation. I mean, I guess with my previous career, being a professional boxer and doing all of that, I've already built my LLC around all of that. So I understand the basics, but about food production, that's a whole different animal. I just asked them different questions about different things and they go, yeah, well, this is what you have to do. You have to get a hold of them, you have to get a hold of them. And I guess a lot of people never would have thought, you know, like hot sauce is actually fermented. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's quite wild. There we go, we get down there, baby. We get into the, the, the manufacturing of the whole thing and um, it's, you know, now you don't have to be there at any point of sale, things like that. And seeing that, that little shift slowly happening for myself, oh, it's finally, finally, because then once it's done, well, if you want to come out with another product, just boop, 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 it's all, you've already done all the other steps. But it's those little incremental steps early in your production. You need to get those done. Otherwise, you're going to be climbing that hill the entire experience, and most people run from it. But through boxing, I've learned, like, go towards the danger. You're either going to win or you're going to learn. When I was 15 years old, I always wanted to own my own business and, you know, just slowly got involved with DECA, which is a business club for high school students. In 2018, my mom was in a purchase agreement for Loose Fish House. Originally, she wanted to open up a seven-room inn right off the side here, and we were just going to rent out the retail space that I'm standing in right now to someone else. And then I was like, hey, mom, dad. Let's open an ice cream shop. We looked at the feasibility of the business, what we could do with it. Ice cream wasn't the only thing that we were gonna focus on. So we're like, okay, well, what can we do? We have the neon signs from Lou's Fish House. We have all the equipment. Let's smoke fish. Lou's Fish House, this is Ashley. How can I help you out? I'm 16 years old. My name is Caleb Waldron, and I am the Smokehouse Manager at Lou's Fish House. My team is awesome. Everyone here is younger than me, so 18 and under, all the way down to 14. And they are the greatest group of kids that I have ever worked with. 
from the time we were like, okay, we're actually going to open to the time we opened was roughly three months or so. Um, so we didn't go through the traditional process of we have this business plan that we've been working on for a year. It was more so thrown together. I think I contributed some to it, but for the most part, I think it was my mom who wrote it. Starting off opening a business, you don't really know what needs to be done until you're in the middle of a fire and you're trying to open. Um, so my dad, my mom helped me out tremendously with all the work that needed to be completed from renovations to creating a functional business. Um, I also, my deck advisors really helped out with just the support factor of you got this, you can do this, um, I believe in you. And a lot of the community uh, reached out as well and they were like, we're behind you, you can, you can open a business even though you're only 16 <laughs> and don't have your driver's license yet. So. You know, looking back, I didn't live like an abnormal teenager lifestyle, but I definitely took different paths. I figured out after running loose for a couple of years, you realize what you like to do and what you don't like to do. I really enjoy working with people, such as our customers, our employees, having a healthy relationship there. As a young female working at a business, a lot of people don't necessarily believe that what I'm doing is actually me. Um, they think I'm just kind of the front of the business and that all the hard work is coming from someone else. Okay. I actually run this business and this is actually my team and we work together to accomplish a greater mission. Later on today, I will be going through all of our accounts, um, making sure we have fish ordered and smoked, making sure my employees are scheduled to work and generally managing the facility. You're welcome. As a manager, she is more coaching than manager. Yeah. I've never gone through a meeting or anything saying, wow, you know, that was very mean or manager-like. She's more building, and so that's what makes me want to be an entrepreneur, is that um, she's coaching me to be better. She's teaching me how to be better. Um, you know, everybody makes mistakes every day, and that's what she always preaches is just, it's okay if you make a mistake, we just can't make them twice. And I totally respect that, and that's what I'd like to be as a boss. I think making it is taking every day one step at a time and saying, how can I improve this business for long-term success? It's awesome being a part of it when it was just a little, little business and now we're growing and growing and now we get relationships with people and it's awesome. Yep. It's a lot of hard work and eventually you look back, you know, whether it be a month down the road or a year down the road and you go, wow, we did that. that you yield you sway all day relaxing in the pleasant breeze my workload has dropped me to my knees I wish I was a true story no offense to guitar players but I was at a restaurant with my granddad and we were talking I said I'm in band I play the trombone and I'm in choir and I sing all right but I want to be able to accompany myself trombones up to your lips everyone was like play the guitar my family was like get a guitar and I says no I'm a unicorn, I would never, everybody plays a guitar. Everybody and their mother plays a guitar. So my granddad said, I got an accordion in my wardrobe, why don't you take it for a week? And if you like it, go buy one. If you hate it, then don't waste your money. Within 24 hours, I was practicing in a parking lot. I can't remember who it was, but they came up to me and said, hey, I got a family reunion in Hoyt Lakes tomorrow. Do you want to play there? I made the joke, I ain't cheap. How much we talking? I didn't even know how to play it. I knew how to play one four chord song on an accordion. I just came up within five minutes and had my first paid gig within 24 hours of playing an accordion. Within a week, I went back to my granddad and I was playing beer barrel polka and he says, gosh, you, you made more progress in a week than I have since the friggin' 80s. Just keep it. I'm never gonna play it again.
smiling faces with our new outlook on things. And walk and talk and finally notice the happiness life brings. You have to smile when Steve's around. He's just always been a breath of fresh air. We just decided to have something silly, fun, and laugh. There's not enough of that right now. <laughs> I do love performing, it's by far the most entertaining and rewarding thing for me personally and you get to meet so many other people, but uh, yeah, I don't want to be a, just a tool that people use to smile, I want to be a, you know, a tool people use to smile and something that can help you think a little deeper. Hello everybody, thanks for the view. I'm Steve Sokola. And I'm Brecklin Palace. And welcome to episode three of Tandem Bike Talks. Today we got an epic, epic video planned for you, talking about going back to school. Believe it or not, I had this idea back in college. I had a friend my junior year, she took her own life. I was distraught. I had a real hard time getting over it. <laughs> I bought a tandem bike and I says, I want to make it my goal to somehow combat the suicide rate on my campus and maybe my world if I can get stuff online by uh, picking people up on a tandem bike. So I wrote a song called Pick em Up, which is about not only physically picking someone up on a tandem bike, but picking up someone emotionally too. So the Tandem Bike Talks was an idea I had two years ago and I'm finally making it a reality because I'm a procrastinator with tech problems but it's going to be good. And I expect to have some comedic episodes, but a lot of insightful, thought-provoking stuff as well. I know that anytime I ever hang out with Steve, it's a fun day. So Brecky, what do you think of this whole back to school thing? Well, I am glad that we are going back to school, but also I am nervous about it. I trust him with a lot of things. I mean, I probably tell him more things than I tell my best girlfriend, so. Yeah. The Northern Lights Music Festival has been a part of my life since 2013, I believe. I had a part-time job building the set and painting it for the opera company. And I don't know exactly how it happened, but I'm pretty sure Vita heard me talking to somebody while I was at work. I'm Vita Zupansik, originally from Aurora and I'm the artistic director of the Northern Lights Music Festival. She said, you you got a low voice. How old are you? Like 13, 14? She's like, how would you like to be in the opera? I had never studied Italian. I had never even like sang with sheet music before. I ended up with a small little 20 second solo in the opera Pagliacci by Leon Cavallo, an Italian opera. And I was only a ninth grader and flash forward, I was going into the Marines. Vita just kind of said no. She said, you're going to music college. And I was like, well, I'll give it a, I'll humor you. I ended up applying to Rowan and she bought me a plane ticket because she believed in me that much. I owe her so much for my success in my life and I, I love her, I really do. You know, fun fact, I am a substitute teacher. I got my paperwork done finally and I taught for like five days before COVID struck. You know, I milk what I can financially, started, you know, shingling a little roof to make ends meet and landscaping and I lost all seven of my piano students and my one accordion student and uh, had over 60 paid gigs canceled. It's definitely, you got to feel it, you got to be sad. It took a lot out of my confidence in my, my life for a while. March. April, May were the hardest. <laughs> but then by June, I was like, you want to know something? I'm done with it. I'm a happy guy. I started getting drive-in gigs and barbecue type social distance gigs. And if you want to survive this, do it. You have no idea how good it feels to have a live gig again. I don't like to call myself a victim. My life is good. There's a lot of privileges that I've been given just because of my hair color and my accordion skills and my bass voice and the skin color and stuff too. But I, I'm a big advocate for no matter what cards you dealt with, it's up to you to keep, to play and to, to grow and build. And even though I'm a child abuse victim and I grew up in, you know, relative poverty and my mom got remarried and things were better and I got bullied and all this and all that and was malnourished and kicked around a lot growing up and was, you know, uh, 
I don't talk about that. In fact, I'm kind of shocked I even brought it up in the interview, but this is getting real. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't need a life jacket. I can swim. Home in Palo, I'm never alone. It's just a few hours north of the old Metrodome. I'll always miss Palo and its small town charm, where the people are friendly and the saunas are warm. I want to get famous, and I never really knew why, but now I do. I want to get famous not because I want the wealth and the cars and the ladies, because quite honestly, I'm not really uh, made happy by those things. I'm happy no matter what. I was happy in a trailer park. I was happy covered in mud. I want to get famous so that I have a bigger chance for uh, an impact on the world. My goal is to make the world a better place. It's been that way since I was a little kid. Yeah, I will be famous. I will be famous for the right reasons. Just give me a plane ticket to North Minnesota. I know it's gonna be okay. Cause I know you are my home. When life has me oh so weary, that's where I'm going. That place was heaven sent, and it's where I spent the best days of my life. You know that I'm from Palo, Minnesota, the place where I'm free. From all of my strife